What a gorgeous day for hiking. Some blue skies, little puffy clouds. Pretty goofy. Hi there. I'm in Nevada and I'm about to enter the Arctome Wilderness. Kind of on the east side of the Toyabe Range, kind of right smack in the center of Nevada. And uh, today we're heading up the South Twin River. So I'm going to spend probably five, six days out here. Uh, so let's take a look at this map real quick to show you what my route plan is and then let's get hiking. Okay, I know this map is a little difficult to read, but uh, we're here at the South Twin Trailhead and we're going to be heading up the South Twin River today. And I'm getting kind of a late start, so I don't know how far I'm going to get, but my goal is to get about six or seven miles in because um, I'm going to camp in this area because day two I'm planning on hiking this whole section of the Toyabe Crest Trail. And that section right there is 13 miles from this uh, turnoff to the Arc Dome. Uh, so uh, we'll see how this goes. Uh, but yeah, that's the general idea. I'm kind of looping around here, going up to the Arc Dome Summit, uh, if everything works out here. And then I'm probably going to go back down and complete that little loop, camp there again, and then probably uh, hike somewhere along the crest in this area. Kind of playing that part by ear. Uh, we'll see what happens. This trail starts off right away going steep uphill. Very cool. Check out this view. This place is already epic AF. Way prettier than I was expecting. Looks like I am descending to meet up with the South Twin River. The first look at the South Twin River. Yeah, it's just a pretty small stream. Beautiful out here. It's very green down by these riparian areas. I love it.
water, but this South Twin River is a lot kind of weaker in flow than I thought it would be, so it's kind of nice. I was kind of not sure about how the creek crossings would be on this trip. Oh, check this out, guys. Wow. Getting sheer vertical canyon walls now. And uh, here's the Twin River down there, South Twin River, that is. This is the way I'm headed. It is just gorgeous out here already. Only about a mile in. There's massive rock features sticking up here, and I've never seen anything quite like it. Kind of looks like sort of a hoodoo, but I think like there's a rock fall that happened like right in here. I think it was part of like this canyon wall at some point. Check out that view behind me. <laughs> Looks like the trail was just recently cleared. Let's hope all the trails out here are like that. Just a brief look back at kind of the canyon wall that was on my right so far. This is looking back where I came from.
That's his creek camp. So there's a little uh, kind of historical camp over here. Let's go check this out. Just some old rusty cowboy relics. Yeah, that's kind of cool though. Yeah, there's some trash over here. Looks like this has been used recently enough. A little overgrown over here. Pretty epic. This peak here doesn't have a name, but I know it's a little bit above 10,000 feet. Starting to lose my light. Better find a campsite soon. Looks like the South Twin River Canyon has opened up, so as soon as they're around the bend here, I think I'm gonna go probably another mile and a half, two miles at most, and uh, find a place to set down near the creek, call it a night. Okay, so I did find a campsite finally. And this is actually the trail to the Arc Dome Summit. You can see that up there. So there's not very many good camping opportunities up here. Uh, there was a, like a lot of just dense sagebrush forest. So um, this is the only campsite around for miles. So I'm gonna camp here tonight. There's a little bit of trickle of water up here. Um, if I went way down there, I can get back down to the South Twin River, but I'm just gonna collect from this seep over here. Uh, so it's starting to get dark, so I gotta set up my tent. Camping for night one. Man, what a beautiful place. Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing yet. I'm not sure if I'm gonna go over the pass to the Reese River and loop around tomorrow, 
or if I'm just gonna go straight up to the Arc Dome tomorrow and kind of take like the crest and go down into the North Twin River. Uh, I'm not really sure about that. This might be a six day trip or it might be a four or five day trip. So playing it by ear again. Uh, but yeah, time to shovel some uh, dehydrated mountain house crap into my mouth and uh, call it a night. See you guys tomorrow. Morning. It got really cold last night. It probably got down in the 20s and it's like the end of June. Uh, I'm actually shocked at how cold it gets out here. Uh, so yeah, I was kind of just shivering in my tent last night, but uh, now it's like hot and sunny out here. So here's my food bag and uh, you should probably see a bunch of cereal in there. Normally I eat cold cereal in the morning, but today I think I'm gonna actually make hot breakfast because I brought enough food for six days, but I don't think I'm gonna need all that food. I think I decided I'm probably gonna hike four or five days at most out here. So I've got my choice here of chicken pho, sweet pork and rice. I think I'm gonna save that one for dinner because it's really high calories. Grilled chicken jambalaya or Irish shepherd's pie. And I think I'm gonna go with the jambalaya this morning for breakfast. Here's the before. finished product. Delicious. I think I'm actually going to do uh, the same route that I kind of originally thought I might do. So I'm going to go over the pass via the uh, Toyobi Crest Trail uh, down into the uh, Reese River Valley and then I'm going to follow that for a few miles until I connect up with uh, Big Sawmill Creek and then I'm going to take that up and uh, probably camp uh, maybe a mile or two before it starts heading up into the high alpine. And then tomorrow, day three, I'm going to uh, head up the big sawmill creek side of uh, this kind of uh, crest range behind me. And then I'll probably go over to like the north, um, what is it, the north twin river <laughs> on day four and day five and hike out from there. So yeah, ready to hike. Uh, here we go. Getting kind of a late start. It's already uh, just after 11 a.m. Um, I think I'm gonna go about 12 or 13 miles today up to Big Sawmill Creek. Uh, we'll see what happens there. I have no idea about the camping. I hear there could be some pretty big beaver ponds, so it could be a little bit difficult with the creek hiking, but um, I don't think the water levels in uh, South Twin were very bad, so I figure all the rivers out here are gonna be pretty manageable. Uh, but yeah, it's probably a good chance that I'm gonna be setting up camp again uh, close to dark. So I gotta use all the daylight today to do this hike. Trail is a little hard to follow up here. It's kind of a uh, sort of cross country type hiking. I take that back. There's actually a decent trail up here. It just kind of disappears and reappears frequently. This is to the left of that last shot. So I'm getting up into kind of some high country, up into more pines, probably around 9,000 feet elevation. Really starting to feel the altitude. This is kind of the way I'm going, going into that pass right there. And it's just these really pretty kind of sagebrush hills out here. Very walkable country. You can just kind of walk through the sagebrush. As long as you have long pants on, that is. This is looking back the way I came from. All that down there is kind of the uh, South Twin River Valley. All that kind of the narrow canyons that we hiked yesterday are down that way.
very much like uh, the cheer cows out here. It's just kind of like dead on once you get up into the high country. I guess there's uh, more sagebrush out here, but yeah, it's very similar to the cheer cows. close to the top of this pass. I'm on top of the pass and I'm really glad I went over here and decided to do this Reese River route. This is what's ahead. It just looks gorgeous out here. I keep saying that but I really mean it. Just these green kind of rolling hills. It's kind of a fence up here. I did see some cows earlier on the way up so that's probably what the fence is for. They were the kind with horns aka bulls. So I gotta watch myself a little bit out here with the cows. And uh, this is where I came from. This is the uh, South Twin River Valley way out there. I'll be meeting back up with the South Twin River uh, at the end of tomorrow. What a gorgeous day for hiking. Some blue skies, little puffy clouds, and this kind of green sagebrush, sort of, uh, I don't know what you call it. I guess it's Braith Basin Scrub. That's what I'm calling it anyway. This is pretty much the uppermost part of the Reese River. It's not very big right now, but I'm expecting it to get a lot bigger further down. Just a pretty little stream right now. All right, looks like I'm gonna be getting my feet wet. There's uh, no rocks in that one. But uh, it's kind of a hot day out here, so the water's pretty refreshing. And that's the trail back where I came from. Uh, out there is the pass that I descended down into this valley from. And uh, kind of these green uh, bushes out here, this is the Reese River. And get some kind of interesting rock formations over here. 
They look to me like volcanic in nature. This is the way I'm going. Uh, since descending that pass, it's been pretty pleasant hiking so far. Um, I do lose the trail every now and then, like I just did, just literally this second. Um, but uh, for the most part, the trail has been fairly well defined. Um, I've had to like pull out my phone a few times to kind of align myself with the trail, but other than that, it's pretty easy route finding. Some interesting rock features I just kind of passed through out here. Very green by this river. I think this is Little Jet Creek or where Little Jet Creek meets the uh, Reese River. There's actually some really good camping in those trees right there I'm told, but I have a long ways to go today. So I won't be camping there. This is the way I'm headed. Keep uh, going in between kind of sagebrush desert and kind of riparian zones. So every once in a while you start crossing these you know, riparian areas, the grassy, and it's kind of hard to make out the trail. That's really what's taking me the longest here. The actual hiking is not difficult. It's just constantly uh, losing the trail and having to kind of second guess yourself with route finding. And uh, it usually only takes me, you know, a few seconds to find the trail, but uh, all those times that you lose the trail, it adds up. And uh, so um, I'm only like four and a half miles in, I've been hiking like three hours, so hopefully uh, the route finding stays decently easy. Looks like it was once a trail sign, but no longer. I think this is for Tom's Canyon. So I'm gonna go this way. This uh, follows the Reef, Reese River downhill. So I think uh, that's our direction right there. Um, I don't know. There's some kind of route through here. I can kind of sort of make out a trail. Uh, yeah, I guess this takes you out of the wilderness. It's a tad bit overgrown. <sighs> I 
Reese River is getting deeper, wider, and more swift. But so far that's not been a problem along this trail. Kind of high up on the river. There's some really big beaver ponds along the Reese River, really, really close to the trail. And these are really deep. I'm very much hoping that the trail is not gonna have me walking through this stuff. You can kind of see a beaver swimming over there. <laughs> this is kind of cool. There's a little beaver dam right here. I got worried because I knew I was going to have to cross the river and it was really deep in that section of trail right behind us. But uh, right here, it's not deep. Just an easy, shallow crossing. Doing a lot of river crossings now. Probably, uh, gosh, the last quarter mile I've probably already done like seven or eight. I'm in the thick of it now. Wow. Yeah, it's easier than it looks. It's not that bad. It's really not that bad. And to be honest, um, it's nice uh, being in this dense underbrush because I'm getting a lot of shade. Looks like the world's tiniest whirlpool. Turned out to be just a beautiful day. It was pretty hot there for a while. It felt like it was almost 90, but it seems to be cooling off a bit now. So I'm hoping tonight isn't quite as cold as last night was. I actually had frozen water when I woke up this morning and I had to like keep my filter safe from freezing. So yeah, so it's uh, kind of a double-edged sword with it being hot out. Um, if it's not hot out, then it's probably gonna be really cold at night. So. Looks like I'm walking into an aspen forest now. This place is really cool. Kind of reminds me of sort of uh, a little bit of like the Gila Middle Fork kind of vibe. Well, I'm back in the thick of it again.
So the Toya B Crest Trail is now heading kind of uphill and I'm getting a pretty awesome view of the Arc Dome. I think that's the Arc Dome anyway. Here, check this out. Pretty badass view. That sage, I can smell it. it smells like uh, like I guess I'm gonna herbal tea or something. Beaver time. Pretty goofy. Okay, reach the turnoff to Big Sawmill Creek. Uh, the guidebook I have says look for a fence and go through it. So that's the trail right there, believe it or not. So that's where I'm going. Okay, this climbs uh, about 2,000 feet over about four miles. At least that's to get to the spot I wanted to camp at. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that far today because it is a lot of climbing, so I'm gonna go slower. And I am starting to lose the sun already. It's uh, almost 5.30. So uh, yeah, let's we'll see what happens. I might just do uh, two and a half, three miles up this as far as I can get and uh, find a good place to camp. dense kind of jungle in here. Wasn't expecting this Toya B Crest Trail to be this overgrown up here unexpectedly, but it's okay. It's still pretty good walking. Another shot of the Arc Dome. We're gonna be heading up there tomorrow. It looks like the canyon for Big Sawmill Creek is starting to narrow up up ahead. So uh, I'm gonna hike up a bit and see if there are any good camping opportunities. If not, then I'm just gonna go back down to kind of this sagebrush desert and camp by the water over there. All right, I found a place to camp. Uh, it's not exactly a, a real campsite. It's actually <laughs> kind of like in the way of the trail. But to be perfectly honest, I haven't seen any people out here whatsoever. And it's a Tuesday. So I'm uh, just bet baking on the fact that nobody's gonna come through here uh, before tomorrow morning. 
Yeah, I'm about a third of a mile from the spot that I originally thought I would camp at, but I'm just to the point where I'm just tired out. Um, today was a lot of bushwhacking, really, really difficult bushwhacking. So there was a good three, four miles that I didn't film whatsoever on this uh, route of 12 and a half miles. So um, it's uh, it's been pretty badly overgrown. Uh, so hopefully that's going to be over soon because um, at about half a mile to a mile up uh, the route for tomorrow, uh, we're going to get out of the brush and up into like kind of the subalpine, alpine kind of zone. So yeah, anyway, time to set up camp. Uh, there's barely enough room for my tent right here. At least I have water access. So I'm by, uh, like real close to a big sawmill creek. So yeah, um, it was a really difficult day. Just tons of bushwhacking and uh, I'm very tired and uh, ready for bed, but I gotta make food. So that's gonna be the end of day two. See you guys tomorrow. Morning, it's day three. Last night kind of sucked. Uh, this campsite is not a great campsite. I was kind of sliding around. My tent was like at a slant, but uh, I survived the night. So uh, today the plan is to hike up the Arc Dome Summit at around 11,700 feet. And then I'm gonna take a route back down to kind of loop around back to the uh, campsite I stayed at on the first night. Uh, so yep, that's the plan. Here we go. Nothing like bushwhacking through overgrown trail first thing in the morning. I guess one of the nice things about this overgrown trail is that it smells really good. I think this is some kind of wild mint. It smells like really minty, like fresh breath. Like I just brushed my teeth or something. Which, well, I just kind of did, but yeah, this is the trail ahead. Yeah, the smell of mint is overpowering up here. It's really nice. Uh, way better than smelling like cow shit and stuff like that. <laughs> Other places that I hike. So I got to climb up in the high country today. Um, I think today's elevation gain is about 3,500 feet. And uh, total mileage is like 10 and a half miles. But uh, most of the elevation gain is in like the first uh, maybe four or five miles. trail is really steep. I'm having to take a lot of breaks. It's uh, gaining a lot of elevation really quickly. The trail's about to flatten out a little bit.
got our rare trail junction signs out here. I believe the one to our left is for the TCT, Toyabi Crest Trail. All right, let's see, I don't know. Yeah, this one's just saying TCT. And this one up here also says TCT. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. I believe this is the way I need to take. So we're going uh, up, up, up. Super heckin' windy up here, as I expect. Above tree line. Man, just rugged high country out here. So that right there is the Toyobi Crest Trail. So I'm gonna take that, I think there's like a pass right there that I'm gonna go over. And then we're gonna have a really good view of the Arc Dome, I think, which I'm gonna climb up. So that right there, that valley is what I climbed up from. And that was a real tough climb. Probably a couple thousand feet of elevation gain right from that. And uh, the Toyby Crest Trail actually follows kind of a, a line out there. And it kind of curves. And it kind of curves and comes up this way to where I'm at right now. What a magnificent view. I'm uh, still on this uh, Toyobi Crest Trail. I'm getting close to meeting up with the Arc Dome Trail 50A. Okay, the trail is kind of somewhere over there from that last shot that I did. It's just really desolate out here. Cold, windy, cloudy. Not exactly the conditions I was hoping for. Here's the Arc Dome right here. And I was planning to summit this, but now I'm not so sure. The weather's just turning kind of crummy. Looks like I'm up in the alpine tundra now. Uh, all the sagebrush has kind of disappeared. Okay, so that out there is the South Twin River where I came in at looking towards the trailhead and then to my right This is the South Twin River Valley and I'm going to be descending back into that. So that's where I was on day one
Okay, I'm on the saddle about to start heading down. So this is the trail that I came down on. And this over here to the left is part of the drainage for Big Sawmill Creek. Sorry about the wind noise here. Pretty bad. Up here is the Arc Dome. And uh, there's a little wind break over here. I hesitate to call it a campsite, but I'm sure people camp up here. The trail that I'm taking, so yeah, this is the Arc Dome Trail right here. The trail I'm taking opens over here, and it goes off that way. I think I'm gonna drop down somewhere over there. This whole valley here is kind of where the South Twin River flows down. So that's where I came in on, on the first day. What an epic view. So I got a drop about uh, 3,000 feet in elevation. That's the way I'm going. I thought this route was going to present some challenges with route finding because people online said there was like some cross country stuff. Uh, maybe those are old reports because this route so far is just beautifully cairn. Um, it's better marked than a lot of the other trails I've been doing out here the last couple days.
All right, I'm back to the campsite that I had on night one. Uh, while I was descending, I came to a decision and I decided I wanted to shoot for a better campsite because this campsite just kind of sucks. And actually, there were some really good campsites way back up, but they were kind of far up the way I came from. And one of the good campsites that's really close, uh, there were actually a couple of people camping there. Um, so I'm thinking that I'm actually going to hike out tomorrow and just make it a four-day trip. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hike uh, down about uh, three, four miles down the South Twin River. And uh, I'm going to make camp uh, at one of like the, the good campsites, the ones with like fire rings and good tree cover and good access to water. Well, since I wasn't able to hike the Arctome on this trip, what I want to do is I want to come back uh, later on someday. And I'll probably come in via the North Twin River. And that's what I was going to do tomorrow, but instead I'll just save that for another trip, combine it with the Arc Dome Summit, and then hike some of the other trails out here that I didn't cover on this trip. I like to do that whenever possible so that I can kind of not put all my eggs in one basket and um, make multiple videos in kind of the same wilderness area. Hope that makes sense. But uh, anyway, I'm going to hike down the South Twin River now uh, to uh, some campsite that's probably three, four miles down. Uh, I'm not going to film it since I filmed that on... Uh, day one, so I'll see you at camp. Oh yeah. All right, looks like I got a campsite. I'm only about four miles away from my car too. This is a pretty sweet campsite. I mean, at least I have a place to sit and tons of space to set up tents over here. So it's way better than the last couple campsites. Uh, man, the last, the, like yesterday's campsite, you couldn't even really call it that. I was practically almost in the trail uh, and there was really nowhere else to camp for miles around. I mean, no joke. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm uh, getting the impression that when people who are in the know backpack out here, they know where specific sites are and they plan their mileages around those campsites. Um, because I'm used to being in wilderness areas where you can almost just camp anywhere. So yeah, you kind of have to know where they're at ahead of time in this place. Um, as far as like the feel of this wilderness, the Arctome wilderness, uh, the lower parts of the canyons feel a lot to me like the Gila wilderness, specifically the middle fork of the Gila River. It's a little bit smaller than that river, but it kind of has the same vibe with this, the tall canyon spires, the colorful little spires and stuff. Um, I compare a lot of places to that place just because I hike a lot in the kind of the southwest quadrant and a lot of these places share the same geology and characteristics. So hiking was kind of interesting. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was uh, both easier in some ways and harder in other ways than I expected. Um, how it was easier is that I was expecting very difficult route finding. Most of the trip reports and books that I read on this place uh, basically said that you're going to be going through very deep, swift river crossings, which there was really none of that here, uh, just little tiny creeks, and a lot of uh, route finding with like overgrown trails or just routes. And uh, it turns out that uh, somebody probably cleared a lot of these trails in the past few weeks or months. I don't really know, um, but um, I didn't have any trouble route finding. I mean, it was pretty smooth sailing. There was a lot of overgrown trail, but I was always able to pick up the trail. It was just kind of like chest high, like sagebrush uh, desert slash scrub forest uh, for a lot of the trip. Um, so that makes um, moving a little bit slow. How I thought it was harder than I was expecting was just the climbing. I mean, just the elevation gain was very, very difficult. Um, it's not a whole lot to say about that other than um, I'm disappointed I didn't get up to the Arc Dome, but by the time I was at the point where I could have climbed up the Arc Dome, um, I was feeling pretty tuckered out. Just, and I didn't sleep very good like last night because, frankly, my campsite sucked. <laughs> I was like sliding around on my pad all night. So I do plan to come back here at some point. I want to do like the uh, North Twin River and I want to get up to the top of the Arc Dome. And then there's some other trails, uh, a few other trails out here that I have yet to do. So I'm not going to film tomorrow's hike. It's only four miles back to the car and it's all stuff that you saw on day one. Uh, so that's going to be the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like if you like and subscribe for more. See you next time.